Hello, I'm Christopher Thompson. Welcome to another edition of Chris Speaks. Okay, so today we're going to talk about Hurricane Harvey. And this is close to home. I live in North Texas. It, um, Hurricane Harvey ravaged the coast and other parts of southern Texas, including Houston. Um, <clears throat> this, this is a pretty bad disaster. Like, I guess for this kind of thing, the debt toll's not that high, but you got to remember that right now, well, they're not exactly sure how many people died right now, because the water's just receded, and, like, a couple days ago it was 20, but now they're thinking it's up to 45, and they're thinking it's going to be more, because the problem is, is they haven't, they have to reaffirm there's people that have been missing, and so I guess they found that some of the missing people have, did drown. And so they're probably still going to find more when everyone goes home. I guess they're all coming home and going back to uh, try to fix that. Uh, so that's at least 45. And I guess it could be a lot worse for natural disasters. And people will be like, oh, well, there were a lot more people during Katrina or whatever. But it doesn't matter even if it's two, two people. These are people that are not statistics. The, I mean, they were used for statistics, but these are real people with real families and real lives. And so, to say, oh, well, it's only 45, well, that's 45 people that are dead. Even if, like I said, even if it was two. So that's pretty bad, and <clears throat> I feel bad for these people who have passed and their families. I know there was one thing that was sad, is where they found, I don't know how the mother drowned and the baby didn't, but the mother had drowned in the well he's a toddler was clinging to his mommy and they found him poor kid <coughs> hopefully he's gotten clothed and gotten into a warm place <coughs> okay so <coughs> this is this is really it's even dirt. one of the things is that it uh, caused the refineries which I think a lot of them are in Houston there's probably some in some of the other cities that were affected by this and because of this we, we are experiencing a gas shortage the sound of gas and then they thinking maybe they're bringing it in from other areas from other states it, so pretty soon I got to I, I still got quite a bit of gas but I should probably top off my tank because who knows I don't know this could be something that goes on for weeks because even once they get the refineries up and running they're still behind what a week or two in production so Gas prices are probably going to go up high in this area. Uh, like I said, there's actually a shortage right now because of it. The good thing coming out of this is I've seen a lot of people in Texas, and then obviously there's a lot of celebrities outside of Texas, a lot of people outside of Texas that are helping. There's people donating money. But you saw a lot of people like other te Texans helping fellow Texans. You had, speaking of Texans, there's the, uh, out here there's a team in Houston, the Houston Texans, and obviously they live in the area, so they care about the people, and, I mean, everybody, but it's close to home, it is their home, so, uh, one of the, I, I don't know the name of the player, but there was one, uh, one of the Texas, the Houston Texans that, um, was, uh, able to raise, like, three million dollars or something like that, and might have raised even more, there were people, um, going down there with trucks carrying boats to take the boats down there to get people out of there there were people out there rescuing the animals there were there was this organization I don't know what they were called where they're cowboys and they're like a nonprofit organization and they went there to drive the cattle out to get the cattle to a uh, high spot there's all kinds of people trying to help people I heard it's kind of chaos in these shelters and stuff I don't think, I'm only going to talk about this a little bit. I'm going to bring up Joel Osteen. I'm going to bring up Joel Osteen because uh, all his believers, no matter what he does, he could freaking murder 50 million people and they'd still think he's the greatest thing on earth. Well, this guy, he gets a bunch of... He, he, he gets... They basically rip him a new one because he didn't open up the church for a shelter until... The, <laughs> The first thing he said was it was always open. And here, you got to remember, this isn't just him changing his story in different interviews. This is the same interview. First, it was always open. Then, after that, uh, what was the next one, I think? The next one was, oh, once the 
the shelters were overfilled, were full, and they needed me. Then I opened my doors. Okay, in the same interview, next thing, was, well, it was flood was part. Of, it was partially flooded, and it was safety concerns. And then, well, you really the 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 thing is that Houston didn't a ask us. Okay, e times. So he's lying. One of these. It, there's only one of these things is true or none of them is true, but only one. It, they can't all four be true. So, one, he's lying and he's supposed to be a Christian, right? And second of all, if you read what Jesus says in the Bible, you're not supposed to wait till people ask you to help your fellow man. And you're not supposed to just help Christians, you're supposed to help everybody. So, he's kind of in the hot water, but he's trying to... But, if it's like he lies so much that he can't even keep his story straight in a freaking five minute segment <laughs> i mean seriously but like i said he could he could freaking i don't know <laughs> be become a serial killer and his followers are like isn't he wonderful uh no he's not so again no one knows except him what the real story is and they did show pictures of a uh, girl the garage flooded but who knows that picture could have been taken any time that could have been taken at another time there was flooding going on and then uh, the other thing is is yeah there's flooding in the parking garage but there they never showed any there's no photographic evidence of there being any flooding in his big stadium church but anyways I'm just gonna go that for a long time if Maybe it's not as bad as it seems, but he lied. He lied at least three times, probably all four times. So we don't know what the real thing of that was. And we know the doors weren't open from the beginning. Whatever. Okay, enough on that, jackass. So let's go to the, let's go back to the talk. Okay, so, so yeah, so now I'm wondering what happens to people, you know, there are poor people with trailers or trailers who's had their trailers demolished. I don't know. Maybe they'll stay up here and find a place to stay. So obviously the people with money can go back and afford to um, repair all their houses. And I'm wondering about the people in houses that really don't have money to just ha re... People lost all their furniture, all this stuff. It's bad people have lost loved ones. You know, that's just... I don't know, thinking about them doesn't do anything. I mean, if you can help, if you can help um, donate, donate money, whatever. If you can't, you can't. But if you can, donate it, help out the effort. Because even, um, we're going to need help. Because uh, people in the Dallas Fort Worth area, they're, they're, they're going to bring refugees up there here. But it's going to cost millions of dollars to shelter these people just for like a couple of weeks. So, and eventually the money's going to run out. So if you can donate, uh, donate to, I'm sure there's all these charities, a lot of them will figure out where to m p take the money and put it here and there and there. Uh, hopefully you can find one that's like that where it won't just send the money to one thing, it'll t put it wherever it's needed. Um, so, yeah, and people in Texas, if you're close by, if you can get down there and you can do things to help people like, I don't know if any of you guys who have uh, construction jobs or remodeling jobs that have big hearts that'll help some of these people out. Because there's people that can't afford to do the repairs needed in their houses. And maybe some of you guys here in Texas down there that have jobs that can do, do it, we could do it pro bono. I mean, come on. It, it, this is a time where people really need help. You don't have to profit every time. If people are going to need... Oh, and that's another thing. If people are here for... Because there's a thing uh, when you send money, it goes to this and that, and then only a certain amount of money gets there. But if you're down here, say you have money where you can... Extra money where you can buy people some couches, beds, stuff like that, because they're going to need a lot of that stuff. And if you actually take it and donate stuff, and donate it to extra people, they're going to get everything that you donate. When you're going through organizations, they have to pay, they have to pay their workers and everything. So only a certain percentage gets there. So if you actually 
donate stuff, things, clothes. Hopefully that'll all get to the people. And I have a cat that's meowing, and he does this all the time. If I kept him in the other side of the door, he'd meow. If I open the door, he meows. My girlfriend's in there sleeping. She doesn't need to hear me talking. She already can, but he's a little rascal that just won't stop. But anyways, talking to important people, Iggy. Um, <coughs> yes, he thinks he's a person. Uh, anyways, <coughs> so we're trying to get through this, and we're dealing with the gas shortage up here in northern Texas, but we're not <coughs> dealing with all the stuff they're dealing with, <coughs> and hopefully everything, everybody will get through this, and <coughs> everything will be all right, and for the people who've lost loved ones, <coughs> I, I, you have my hopes and wishes, I know hopes and wishes don't do nothing, but... <coughs> I just hope these people who have lost family members can get through the the sorrow, through the mourning. I know how it is to lose family members, friends. It sucks and it's hard to get through it, but hopefully if you guys have support, other family members, hopefully when families, when they grieve, they'll get together and a lot of families, even if they're not really close, people will be there for each other. So... We're thinking about the dead and the living that had to deal with that and um, all the people that <sighs> their homes are demolished. Um, some people that poor trailer park people, their trailers went away, they're nothing. And even if, they, even if their trailers are still there, with all the flooding, they wouldn't be able to live, you know. So, like, it just sucks. It sucks. It's a natural disaster. This is the kind of stuff that happens. That's kind of the bad thing, living down there by the coast and just anywhere near the coast. Because hurricanes don't just, they go out for quite a few miles half the time. So you're not just, it's not just the people right on the coast that are affected or affected for like, I don't know, 50 miles. I don't know. I don't know anything about hurricanes. Anyways, that's all for now. Uh, I'll talk to you all soon. <clears throat> And for all you people who have suffered loss and uh, and this hurricane, this Hurricane Harvey, um, man, will uh, just hang in there. People, hopefully, people will help, and you guys can get your life started again.